Hello and welcome back to another Before You Buy, where I want to talk to you guys about some of the hardware in networking and hopefully give you more information before you go ahead and start buying stuff and maybe regretting it later. Today I want to talk about IP cameras. These are devices that you utilize in your home or business environment to create an NVR, a network video recorder. But uh, with so many NAS brands out there offering their own surveillance software, a number of us when buying a NAS device goes, do you know what? I'm going to make the most out of this system. I'm going to get some cameras. But there are things you need to bear in mind before you start buying cameras to dot around your home or business environment with your NAS. And hopefully this video will answer some questions for you. So let's get straight into it. The first thing you need to bear in mind when buying cameras for your NAS is compatibility. I cannot say this word big enough. Not only because cameras need to be compatible and supported by the NAS brands. There's loads of them behind me now. But compatibility of cameras actually changes. A camera is not always compatible with a NAS all the time. Now, if you do link a camera with a NAS for the first time, generally, it will continue to remain connected with that device. But as firmware updates arrive for the cameras themselves and firmware updates arrive for these NAS brands, you will often find that a camera was once compatible and then it isn't. Now there's lots of reasons for that. Sometimes it's because the camera utilizing utilizes um, a lot of Java in its um, output of the camera, the live stream. Sometimes it's because a camera was supportive of something called OnViv that we're gonna talk about later on that it doesn't eventually. And sometimes it's because a camera from a brand in a previous revision supported third-party utilization and then later on they removed that in favor of their own proprietary software the blame can either be in both directions but ultimately it means that sometimes a camera was once supported and it's not and vice versa so i cannot stress enough that you need to check compatibility before you buy one because just because people like myself have told you that a Rio link or an Anker camera is supported now at the time of recording that particular camera might not be supported later on so double check the software revisions and if you're in any doubt make sure that Onviv is supported and we will talk about that in a bit the second reason that you should consider buying or not consider buying for that matter um, cameras for your NAS system and turning it into a lovely little side NVR is to do with licenses. Now this is less about the cameras and more about the brands and I am talking about all of them. QNAP, Synology, Acer Store, all of the works. All of them arrive with great surveillance software to a greater or lesser degree with lots of services, lots of support, lots of access, lots of compatibility. They've all got that but a lot of them, although they include the surveillance software with the NAS when you buy it, they arrive with licenses. So generally, you can always add at least two cameras to any NAS. You can get the NAS and you can attach two cameras via the network to your system. And that means you can record, you can access the camera, set up alerts. The software is very, very intuitive in most ways and the features and supported services do change from brand to brand. But after about two licenses different brands have different feelings and ideas about whether you should add more cameras now two camera licenses is generally the market agreed number for a home user one of the camera at the front one of the camera at the back one in the garden one looking at the postman you end up with two cameras so they'll include support of those two cameras but the minute you go higher than two in some cases queuing up as well think higher than four you will find that that enters the region of a business user. So that is security, that is front room, that is backdoor warehouseman, that is that sort of thing. And that software, the minute it becomes utilized in business, they think business users should kick a bit to the house. They should pay a little bit of a bunch to keep the software updated, to keep the software relevant, so it can be constantly upgraded, security patched, stay one step ahead of the hackers, as well as adding new services long term. Because very few NASs, and I do mean very few, are specifically surveillance. I can probably only name about five or six specific devices that are only for surveillance. The majority of these NAS systems are to support a number of different data storage, software and clients and applications in a single NAS device. Consequently, they feel that they will support home users with surveillance and subsidize it within the cost of the device. 
but the minute you enter business territory, the minute you enter enterprise territory, where you've got four or five of these staring outside the car park, then they want those users to pay. So the way they do it is with those licenses. The idea is that once you've exceeded, in the case of Synology, two cameras, if once you've exceeded four cameras, in the case of Acer Store, the minute you've exceeded four to eight cameras, or in the case of QNAP, depending on which one of their software platforms you use, after that, you have to buy camera licenses that open up more channels to add more cameras. Again, I'm not going to say it's a perfect system and there's arguments to and from. A lot of the time we've talked about it here on the channel, whether we think licenses are a ripoff or perfectly justified. There's arguments on both sides. But nevertheless, if you are going to be buying cameras for your NAS and you've seen a deal on Black Friday or something where they're selling eight cameras for the price of seven or something and you've gone, yeah, I'm going to buy a lot. Bear in mind that there's a good chance that your NAS system will ask you to pay extra to add more cameras to your surveillance setup. So I bear that in mind with licenses. The next thing to bear in mind, again, I said I'd talk about it, OnViv, O-N-V-I-F. It is a standardized protocol and interface between cameras that allows devices to be able to utilize them even if they're not first party and not proprietary. Now, again, let's go to Anker and Rio Link here, two brands I talk about probably more than anyone else. These two brands here with their cameras, sorry about the cable near the mic there, <clears throat> they arrive with their own proprietary software. They both arrive with their own respective software for mobile client, as well as accessing the cameras via a desktop interface. But if you use these, both these cameras on a NAS platform, the NAS can still interact with them. It can still um, commit pan, tilt, zoom. It can still operate the optical zoom on this, as well as utilize a number of the alerts and factors because these two cameras support OnViv, that kind of generic Swiss Army knife um, entry point to their support services, to their recording services, and therefore they can be utilized by pretty much all the NAS systems. So if you are gonna utilize cameras for your NAS and they're not on the compatibility list, check for support of OnViv. OnViv will generally mean a NAS can utilize some or all of what the camera is putting out. That is what OnViv technically is. And if you wanna go real deep, I say technically in the literal sense, that is definitely not what OnViv is. But read out more about it, but that is the keyword, O-N-V-I-F. If you are on your NAS and you're searching for the camera on your network environment and you can't find it, check at the top and see if it's searching for compatible cameras or is it searching for OnViv cameras? Because chances are it's choosing one of them. And if it can't find the camera, switch it to search for OnViv generally cameras will appear straight away. The next point is to do with smart features. A lot of more modern cameras are arriving with more than the typical, oh my God, a pixel's just changed, I must tell everyone. Yes, that's right. A lot of cameras that have things like motion detection have gone way beyond simply the case of they can see a thousand pixels, it's gone, that pixel's changed, that's the pixel we're worried about. It's more than that. A lot of these smarter cameras that are coming out these days not only have got higher resolutions and night vision, thanks to the LEDs there on the front, but also they have features where they can measure movement on a camera and know that it is just a tree moving in the wind and not an interloper. A lot of them have got advanced AI features where not only can it see a pile of pixels, it knows that pile of pixels is a car, a bike, a handbag, a person, and it will integrate the alerts and integrate um, security protocol in line with those AI support um, configurations. Now, although a lot of cameras have got those services built in, it doesn't necessarily mean the NAS can use them. We've had a few cameras here in the last couple of years that have got smart features built in, but the NAS doesn't have access to them. The NAS is compatible and it has OnViv, but it can't use those smart features. And in those cases, often, the NAS is the one that needs to have the advanced AI features. So in the case of Synology, you have to go for NASs like the DVA3219 or DVA3221. These are AI supported NASs that have got those features built in. Or if you're a QNAP user, you've got a QVR door, QVR face tiger, QV, and all these different variants of QVR that use AI support and uh, facial recognition and thing recognition. But there are still some cameras out there that have got AI features that the NAS can utilize. The sad point is those are generally the top, top end. We are talking access camera here. We're talking the cameras that cost 
two, three, five, a grand a pop. Insanely high performing cameras that not only uh, NASA's Light Technology and QNAP have access to the AI services due to specific integration of those cameras. The brand's actually gone out of its way to integrate those. But also, particularly in the case of Synology, definitely, there are apps available in their app center that are supported by those brands. Now, again, the more affordable brands, your Anker, your Rio Link, your Edimax, your Hikvision, there, aren't hard, there are practically no applications in the respective NAS app centers or the uh, targeted and specifically designed utilization of their own AI supported services on those budget cameras on the NAS system. So bear in mind that again, you might see cameras on sale, you might buy cameras that are AI supported, that doesn't necessarily guarantee that the NAS can use those services. Luckily, if you go to the Synology or QNAP compatibility lists, you will generally find a list of the services that are supported by the NAS from that particular camera, so check those out. The last thing to bear in mind is to do with the recording support on cameras in conjunction with a NAS. Now, if you do have a supported OnViv camera or supported compatibility list camera, maybe you've even got support of the AI functions, good for you. You've got cameras dotted around your home or business environment, maybe you bought all the camera licenses, so as far as you're concerned, sweet as a nut, you're done. There is a one last thing to bear in mind, and that is the support of the recording functionality, and that goes more precisely towards compression techniques that are being utilized and multiple streams. A lot of more modern cameras either utilize uh, differing compression techniques such as H.264, H.265, and there's even talk now of H.266 uh, in the future, but also the support of multiple streams. Some cameras have multiple streams built in where you can have a high density, high frames per second, low latency connection of recording, but then you can have different streams to switch between that will lower the quality or the frame rate in some way. So you can have multiple streams recording or a single stream at a lower resolution so you can have more cameras because of the bandwidth consumption. But bear in mind that some cameras have all those features that the NAS can't take advantage of. So you might be buying a camera that makes a lot of bold promises about its frames per second at 1080p or 4K, its frames per second uh, in H.265, or that it supports three simultaneous streams. There are no guarantees that your NAS can support the features and functionality of the camera in question. So make sure you check that compatibility list about the streams supported, because you may be in the unlucky and unfortunate predicament that you've bought a camera that is so fantastically high end, and I found this problem personally recently, that you've got a real link camera that is 4K, but it can't be toned down. So you'll be recording from a camera that is so high end that because you can't whittle down the stream, you can't lower the quality, it is just eating up the bandwidth. And not just the bandwidth either, it is eating up your storage. And if you're not able to take advantage of the variable settings within the camera from within the surveillance software, surveillance station, QVR Pro, etc., or surveillance center on Asus store, if you're not able to take advantage of the lessering recording qualities, then chances are you are going to either fill up your storage very, very quickly and then have to have a very aggressive um, write over recycling every X number of days algorithm in place, or you're going to have to sell off those cameras to get lesser ones. Now, some cameras have got that multiple streaming whereby if an event occurs, it will flick to a more high quality stream so that if someone's breaking in, you have the low level stream, just checking out what's going on, Meh, don't care, you know, 10 frames a second, five frames a second, who cares? And all of a sudden it spots someone, it knows someone's breaking in, and then the high quality stream kicks in. Make sure you have got a camera that has those settings supported on the NAS. Not just the camera, make sure the NAS supports it. But for me, those are five of the most important things to bear in mind when buying IP cameras for NAS. Now, maybe you've got things I've forgotten. Maybe they're more important things for IP camera utilization on the NAS that I've not touched on. If you can think of any, let me know in the comments. If we hit five, five common ones, we'll definitely make another video as a follow-up to this one. But if you've enjoyed the video, click like, click subscribe if you want to learn more, and visit the links in the description where we've done lots of guides on the best IP cameras 
for NAS over the last few years and should hopefully help making the choice for the right cameras for your home or business environment an absolute cinch. I will see you next time.